let's get into the news. And the big, I don't want to say it's the big news of the week, but a bit of the news this week would be that CM Punk will be competing on Collision in a couple of weeks. Uh, he's teaming with FTR to wrestle Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Samoa Joe. Seems a little bit put together, don't it, Scooter? It does, but some people were, were were actually calling Samoa Joe and CM Punk in a match of Collision. Really? How, how they came, how they came up with it, I'll never know. Uh, it's it. I think it's probably going to be a very good match. The thing is, anybody who shows back up on Collision kind of has had, has already prematurely had that thunder stolen. If you've seen the uh, pre, uh, the commercial for Collision. You might notice something odd about it. It features AEW roster members that aren't currently active. Thunder Rosa, Miro, and it just, it seems. I don't I don't think they should have. Announced a main event like this, I would I would have said CM Punk will be in action, but now the Khan is once again hanging this the the debut of the show on. Punk shoulders. It's the mark in him. Well, I mean, it worked in the past because obviously CM Punk is an attraction. It's going to garner attention in media. But it just seems like the last, what, nine months? Since the incident, AEW did themselves no favors of saying this guy is toxic, he's a cancer, he's evil, he destroyed the company, and then, oh hey, he's coming back, and you should like him, he's our friend. I mean, yeah, it's going to work in Chicago, they love CM Punk, but, and to a degree it kind of helped ticket sales, but... Everywhere else Collision is going, it doesn't seem like tickets are really going on selling with him on top. So they're kind of banking on, they were kind of banking on, I guess, people not seeing him in a while? I don't know, but it just seems like, Oh, well, if we put CM Punk in it, I guarantee that we're going to get more viewers. Or more tickets. Well, they're, the, the show the, where Collision is taking place after its debut is in Canada. There's a number of collisions after that will be in Canada. Here's the thing. We're getting very close to the release date for AEW's long-awaited video game, Fight Forever. Correct. Somebody was just recently announced for the game. Somebody we never thought we'd see in a video game ever again. Owen Hart. Oh, wow. Owen Hart. Has been announced for the ro- for the competing roster, not DLC. He's on disc, mm. and I 
it, it looks like we may get a second Owen Hart Cup. Yeah, they uh, kind of announced that like a couple of months ago. To it, well, it's going to be, it's going to take place over Collision. Yeah. In Canada. So. That was one of uh, many uh, Tony Winfrey announcements. Because you get an announcement, and you get an announcement. There was an announcement last week, but there will be an announcement this week as well. Uh, and it, this announcement, uh, the white zone is for loading and unloading only. Nobody told um, A Steel about that. Then they just got a, a bite out of their ass. <clears throat> And then, and speaking of punk, it it looks like we could be getting punk Kenta at Forbidden Door. Right, and that would be a big match, but with no build up, is it really? This could basically be Goldberg versus Hogan at the Georgia Dome. But who's Hogan and who's Goldberg in this situation? Um, it's it's not even who's Hogan, who's Goldberg. It's a matter of having a really big match that people want to see, and you only have a week of advertisement. When you could really melt this over weeks. I think... I think everybody was kind of expecting more uh, leaning towards Punk Tanahashi. Since we didn't get that. But does anybody care, care about Punk and Tanahashi? It's not the, the big match. Nope. It's definitely not. Because Danielson Okada. That's going to be good shit, I would imagine. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another name rumored for Forbidden Door is um, Mercedes Money. Um... I mean, she would be representing New Japan, which is a good thing, but the rumored um, wrestler she'd be wrestling is Soraya. And I don't really don't feel like Soraya would be the best person to represent AEW against Mercedes. No, Scooter? Oh, yeah, no. Should not be Soraya. Or Soraya, depending on who's saying it and which week. Oh, that 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 really boils my potatoes. Um, Just call a fucking page. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, they may turn her. Uh, it clearly should be Brit. Like that's the uh, only logical one. And if not, then 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 Jamie Hader. I think Hader's don't. Ever. You know, you never know at the, at, at at this point with with AEW. So, but but don't put her in with. Someone from the WWE. For the love of God, if you've got her for the night, take advantage of it. But there is also the, um, the thing of Monet is possibly quite injured from um, 
the resurgence. So, so she might not even be a representative of New Japan for this show. The other name that would be logical is Willow Nightingale, but unless she is an AEW contracted wrestler, so how does that make sense? I mean, you, you might as you might as well put uh, you know, I I wouldn't mind seeing. I wouldn't mind seeing. Wait, well, are you talking? You talking about Willow against Mercedes, or are you talking about? No, we're talking be about replacing Mercedes. Oh, oh, oh no! As New I, Japan no. representative, as the oh. New Japan Strong Women's Champion. I mean, if anyone's going to replace her, it's clearly going to be. Kyrie, or if somehow, uh, <laughs> if somehow Japan has, uh, you know, you know, uh, gone to China and signed Sari, Saray, uh, so I I want to see Riho versus Kyrie. Hmm. That's what that's what I want to see. I'm not even sure Kyrie works for New Japan. And I mean, uh, do do we want to take a look at it again at, uh, as we did last time for Door came around? For the uh, the predicted fantasy booking matches. Oh God, no! We did that last year, and none of I, the, the good uh, shit that could have been what, what actually was. Okay, well, I'll just go through them. I won't. We you know uh, Moxley, Ibushi, uh, Orange Cassidy, Shingo Takagi, uh, Punk, Kenta. Romo Takahashi versus Ray Phoenix. Mm. Uh, Daniel Garcia versus ZSJ. Uh, and LIJ versus Chaos. I feel like we've had that before. Like a billion times. Andrade, Rushin, Naito, Trent, Chuck Taylor, and Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, House of Black against Ren Narita, Minoru Suzuki, and El Desperado. Okay. I think that's about it. Yeah. I mean, the other name that would be logical to represent, um, New Japan is, um, uh, Mayu Iwatani, who is the current IWGP Women's Champion. But would you waste an appearance from, from Mayu Against Soraya? Could Britt Baker hang? I don't, I don't think, I don't think they'd be willing to take a chance of sending her to the States. Why not? Because outside of Japan, does anybody else know who she is? Excluding the hardcore fans, which unfortunately, they're a minority here. Well, let me ask you this, Scooter. Did you not get it so incredibly excited when we saw the dream match of Kenny Omega versus El Vikino Del... El, El Del Del Gino Del Vicino. El Ice Cream Al? Um, yeah, that guy. Uh, El Hijo de Vikino... El Hero de Butcher oh, English. Hi, Joe Viking, you know, guy. You didn't get excited for that match? Like, your head didn't explode because Viking you know, was in an AEW oh. ring? Oh my god, I was waiting for that for like weeks, and they only announced it the week before. People waited years for that match. 
years. I waited lifetimes. I was I've been reincarnated three times before that match took place. And that's not an actual joke because you have spontaneous combusted like ten times. In fact, I spontaneously combusted twice now while recording this. <laughs> oh, third time. Stop looking at Nia Jax's OnlyFans while we're doing the show. But I'm her only fan. She's my mommy. So, I mean, it's not out of the realm for people. It wouldn't be out of the realm for AEW to say, Hey, bring Mayu Iwatani. And people say, who? And they'll be like, does that mean we have to wear masks again? Well, I believe we have, we still have like a, what, two weeks for Forbidden Door? And we still, we have like two, three matches confirmed, and they are good matches, so hopefully they don't shit the bed with the rest of the card. Which they probably will. But are you, can you, are you honestly excited to see another Kenny Omega with a Osprey match, though? They've only wrestled once. <laughs> That's my point. I mean, if Kenny Omega beats the living shit out of him, then yeah. Makes him cry again. And of course, the big question is, how will this build to all in? Right. Which is a whole other conversation for another time. Yes. That being said, did you see Lacey Evans' new ring deal? Ah, uh, Lacey Evans version 372? Correct. Uh, her... It's from the, uh, Sergeant Slaughter Jr. Miss line? I mean, it garnered uh, a lot of hate from Sergeant Slaughter and his daughter. Apparently, if you believe rumor and innuendo, they wanted to do vignettes where Sergeant Slaughter trains Lacey Evans and gives her his blessing. Um, he refused that. And now the new ring gear was criticized by his daughter. Ah, uh, yes, the, uh, yes, Daughter Slaughter. Daughter Slaughter, yeah. Um, you, you know how at Halloween in the co in, in costume shops, they have, you know, char like, famous character costumes, but since those names are trademarked, they give a general description, and, and they make it for, you know, into it, you know, so, so that a woman could wear it and look sexy. That's what this is. <laughs> this is this is sexy. This is sexy Sergeant Slaughter cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You're absolutely right. The, the thing is, I don't know how many men were standing at attention. All joking aside, what could what will take to get Lacey o Lacey Evans over? Because what first she was a lady, then she was a marine, then she was a I don't a know survivor. She was a, a, a survivor of a drug, a survivor of a family of addiction, uh, and. But then she used that to manipulate us and be heal again. Ay, ay, ay. When do you just put your hands down and put your hands up and say enough? This isn't working. Maybe go back to NXT. Maybe learn a new hope. How about become a better human being? 
And then we'll talk about bringing you back onto SmackDown overall. I... At, 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 at this point, I don't know, but... I will say... I, I did, actually, I did not realize that Sergeant Slaughter's daughter, her Twitter is actually Slaughter Daughter. Um, <laughs> but the way the way it's worded, the reply to the tweet, it's it seems like a little bit of a work. Like, there's only one slaughter daughter, and she's just a poser. Wait, so is she implying she herself is the poser, or Lacey Evans is the poser? This is why grammar is important. I mean, maybe she was saying she's a hoser, which means she's uh, an idiot. Hey, you hoser, you teaser. All in line, maggots. Please. Okay. Even stink would say that stinks. Oh, like a god a maggot. Okay, how did you just become that bastard? <laughs> hmm. What type of smell? Oh, everyone likes their own brand. You know when you walk into an apartment building and you smell everyone's cooking? On each floor, and you ask, what are they cooking? That! Plus crap! I practice. Ha ha! I practice my voices! Shut the fuck up, Minnie! We won't go. Uh, but, but don't, don't worry, we've got like... At, at, at this point... Lacey Evans has had more character changes than there are Pokemon. I'm not saying a lot. And I just want to go and throw a, throw a Pokeball at her. Hope it get hope it catches her and says, "Stay, stay down." And none of those gimmicks will have. Both gonna for any more heat than just being her actual self, who is actually a really terrible human being. So, there's that. Um, now, rumor and you window, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, probably is. WWE is blocking AEW from sort of arenas. Uh, most notably, um, Madison Square Garden, which we probably already knew that. Um, but there is now a clause when they sign contracts with the buildings that AEW cannot run before or after them to a certain amount of weeks and months. Is this just great monopoly by WWE, or is this them being petty? I think it's, I think it's petty. They, they never did this for WCW. But then again, WCW also had the good sense to stay out of WWE's venues. WCW only showed up twice at Nassau Coliseum. Here in New York. WCW never went to Madison Square Garden. No. Actually, w uh, uh, Microsoft did confirm that um, WWE did block WCW from running Madison Square Garden. That was uh, a fact. Well, okay. Madison Square Garden, I can understand. But I hope I, I would I would say if it's anything longer than 
meant 60 days, I, I, w I would say it's excessive. Uh, you know, 30, 30 days, I think is okay. I think, I think it's understood that Tony doesn't want to play by the, the, the unspoken rules of honor for, you know, among wrestling promoters. That being, like, yeah, don't step on another promotion's toes. Don't show. Don't be vindictive and try to, you know, book in the same week of the uh, of your competition. That's happened once. I think it was. I think it was last year. I think it was last year for their money, as money in the bank. And uh, it, it happened once last year with WWE and AEW. But is it really go? Is it really going to matter if AEW? Does a show in Madison Square Garden? Is it really gonna matter? Probably not. But I don't even say I, does it matter. I would say can they fill it? Which by the some of the ticket sales that they've been getting recently, just here in America, doesn't seem so. No, no. I, 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 I don't think there's anything that's going to come out of that. And this, this will go into a, an, uh, another thing and then I'll get into after we uh, finish this, but I'm, I think this shows Fear. They're not. They're not worried about AEW failing. They're, they're worried about AEW succeeding. Would you say that AEW is succeeding at this point? It seems like the crowd isn't as responsive as they used to be. They're not selling as much many tickets as they could. Yes, they're they, telling, uh, Yes, they sold. They they legitimately sold over sixty thousand tickets for Wembley, but that's a market they haven't been in in the four years that they've been running. So obviously, there is a you know want and a need from the UK fans to be there. But there isn't a want and a need here in America or at Canada in general, in Canada either. I think those sixty thousand tickets were bought by one scalper, <laughs> and uh, this guy is looking to be one rich motherfucker. Uh, how many people will remember they have tickets for All In by the time it comes around? <laughs> but, I mean... It, I mean, until it happens, it, 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 uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but... Speaking of Monopoly, uh, uh, something uh, I knew about a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, uh, because and because I am a uh, I am friends with a Twitch executive. WWE and Twitch have reached an agreement on a partnership. They will. Uh, hold on. The thing about that is now WWE superstars can no longer use Twitch for personal use. If you if you are on Twitch, you are representing WWE. Um, because now, WWE gets a cut of Twitch stream revenue. I was getting into this, uh, with a friend, and, uh, the, the, the person I know is, uh, uh, an executive VP of strategic partnerships at Twitch. Uh, he's on... Uh, he's on, uh, yeah. I also do, uh, wrestling consulting for him whenever he streams, and it's wrestling related. Um, he put the announcement out, somebody asked me about it, I said, I knew about this weeks ago. Um, but, this partnership... Okay, it's good news for some, but when you really look at it, it's greedy, invasive, and unethical on the WWE's part. This is a step towards complete autonomy of WWE having control over their superstars' lives. A what was what used to be a hobby for some is now just another stipulation in the contract. It... Yeah, the first approach they took of, if you're appearing, appearing on any screen, you're doing it as a representative of the WWE brand. That backfired when they tried uh, banning everybody, ev all, every employee from using Twitch. But this starts a really dangerous precedent. This could essentially turn the WWE into a 24-7 job. This is dictating a, a this is dictating behavior, casting a wider net on how their how WWE employees can use social media. Personally, they 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 can't do it personally. That's it's 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 so restricting. It's I think it's kind of a rights violation when you're trying to impact the most abundant socio ecological resource. That's social media. It, 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 it's now one of the most important resources that's not essential to living. You know, and you know, the fact that if you're street, if you're streaming and you're a WWE superstar, you're on the clock. If you're off stream. You're still on the clock. They can dictate and determine when, where, and why they use Twitch. And more importantly, they don't force employees who don't want to stream to stream. Can they really do that? Yeah. But will they do that? That remains to be seen. They start the, the this uh this was announced on Monday. Uh, it was Sunday. It was announced this past weekend, I believe. And on Monday night, the first uh, they did it for the first time with uh with Drew Gulak, 
uh, as a test. Um, Did he have a little PowerPoint presentation? Uh, I asked him. I tried asking him where his PowerPoint presentations were. Um, and they do it with um. No, not Mac not Mackenzie Mitchell. Um, who who hosts Raw Talk? Uh, or, uh, uh, not Caleb Braxton. Kathy Kelly. Ka was it Kathy Kelly? Uh, okay, maybe maybe that was Kathy Kelly. Uh, but yeah, th this is. Yeah, it, it starts with this, but then it's gonna get to a point where the fact that this is the fact that this becomes a round the clock job and WWE employees are still considered independent contractors with no real medical benefits or a union. Well, it's dangerous ground. Let me ask you this. Because we were just talking about the on Sheik a, a little while ago. And obviously the biggest um, conspiracy of scandal in pro wrestling that blew up paper was on Sheik and Jim Duggan in the car. WWE at that time expected you to be in character 24-7 because if you didn't, then you was blowing the, your character and your um, and the, the storyline you were in. Mm. I mean, in today's age, if that ha if kayfabe was still a thing and we didn't know who these people actually were outside of who they actually are would would like somebody like the on Sheik or Hacksaw Jim Duggan you would expect them to be on a Twitch stream as the on Sheik or Jim Duggan no? Yeah, but we're now we're in a day and age where the kayfabe is really relaxed and it's not my my main point here is not about actually living the gimmick. But I mean, essentially, you would have to if you're going to be if you're going every time you're on camera, you have to be this character. Mm, no, you are, you you are an employee of the WWE, but you don't have to speak everything as if you're giving a promo. It's the the problem here is that it's how it's used. For example, let, I would randomly say, let's just say AJ Styles wanted to play Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know that. He'd game. have uh, Zelda, Legend of Zelda. Which one? The new one that just came out, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, I haven't played that. Um, he's got to now get that approved. Okay. Uh, if if they want to do a group stream for something like I don't know Among Us or Hell, a Dungeons and Dragons game, just for an example. The w, it's not them getting together to have fun. It's them getting together to do work. And that's my main issue. The fact that this sets a precedent for other companies to do the same thing. Well, yes. Also, well, not every comp other other companies are as screwy as pro wrestling is. 
You know what I mean? But, yes. But, it, it's... Oh, crap, I just lost my, uh, my train of thought. Other companies... You know, they have... They usually have, typically have clauses. You know, you know, good behavior clauses. You know, they expect employees to behave, you know, uh, and not, you know, not use social media to, you know, defame uh, business. That's that's the that's the that's the thing to me, is that they they now have to. If the WWE says okay, all all you 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 and you, uh, yeah we yeah we we want you to play Smash Brothers tonight. Oh, but I want to come back. So we go to sleep. So what? You're playing Smash tonight. This again. This it's a Pandora's box of how much is too much control. AEO, AEW superstars are streaming on Twitch. A lot more now. You also have OnlyFans. Uh, yes, yes. Um, but it's it's a it's a this is a very narrow street that I hope. It, I really hope it works out. I don't think it will. I think the, you know, obviously you did a lot of research on this and looking into it. But when it comes to social media, social media, Twitch, and even YouTube at this point, WWE has not been the most tech-savvy of companies. Um, you know, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, when they were doing In Your House, I mean, you saw how they looked. They, they do not know how to use computers very well. I highly <laughs> doubt there's going to be anybody in WWE that's going to tell the superstars, hey, you have to play this, you have to play that, you have to do this on your screen. Maybe they'll say, okay, maybe keep this, this uh, topics of pro wrestling under wraps. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. But I feel like that would have been expected anyway. Okay, um, put it th- uh, put it this way: when Drew Gulak was uh, you know in front of the camera, I, all they were talking about was Raw. They were li- they were literally describing. What was going on? They copied my shit. Well, until I feel like when it comes to this, we should maybe give them the benefit of the doubt until proven wrong. And knowing WWE, nine times out of ten, they do prove us. They prove us right. So, hopefully that's not the case. Alright, um, if you believe Nick Khan, if you're an ancient of Nick Khan, then you should probably shut it up your ass. Um, he did an interview explaining that they consider NXT to possibly, potentially, be a door brand for uh, WWE and not just the developmental. We're just going in circles when it comes to NXT at this point, no, Scooter? 
Let me put it this way. Oh no. Not again. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my right gun gal. Um. Make up your fucking minds. I mean, if you wanted to make it a George Brown, you had literally every fucking independent wrestler that was water dam on that show. What? Two years ago? 2.0's been around for what? A little over a year, right? Well, what? I mean, it's no longer 2.0, so. It's two point. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's. If anything, it's NXT three point oh. They're they're getting their great average up. I had a really bad joke, but I'm not going to see because it's inappropriate. <laughs> what? There, what? Something about three inches or something? No. Um. Uh. So. So you had all the independent wrestlers, you had all the legitimate talent to be a dirt brand. You don't give them that legitimacy of being a dirt brand. You make it a developmental system for the guys and girls that really don't, really can wrestle to begin with. And I haven't watched NXT in a while. But the last time I did, still seemed like they couldn't wrestle. Um, and now you want to legitimize these poses? No. Fuck you. It don't work that way. I mean, Braun Breaker challenged Seth for a title match. Well, good for him. Baron Corbin is you know, going to fail at his attempt to win the NXT Championship. Like he does at everything else in life. Yep, as as he failed to qualify for Money in the Bank. As he is now done beaten by Butch. Yes. Um... I th I think I think the most important thing is this. Fuck Ronda Rousey. Oh, you sound really good though, Scooter. What? What are you talking about? I didn't say anything. Um, you you you, you didn't have a concussion. You didn't hear me say if it like if it if it brings in the others. Yeah, you know what? Adam Cole is Keith Lee's bodyguard. Call him Bulge. Motherfucker! Yeah, that's, uh, not going, um... It's kind of like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't type situation when it comes to Keith Lee and Adam Cole. Fuck Budgie. That's what you call them. Fuck buddies. Oh, God. Will you stop? <laughs> uh, oh, finally, Young Rock has been cancelled. Oh, fuck CBS. Yes. And also, fuck NBC for cancelling the show. <laughs> exactly. We only need Fox in US in USA in our lives. Yes, because we all know Fox tells the truth. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face to that. <laughs> ah, Fox sucks. What doesn't uh, suck is um cagematchwrestling.com. Um, that's a site you and I use regularly. It's a great site. Um, it has a lot of great content on it. Um, they've had, they've ran into a controversy. 
Um, they have a rating system on the WWE and AEW shows that you could go and comment on them, etc., etc. Um, and leave it to wrestling fans to abuse that privilege. Um, you got uh, AEW fans shitting on WWE shows, WWE fans shitting on AEW so and they came to the point, Cage Match came to the point where they had to uh, stop the, and I quote, the tribalism of these fans for doing this. And they're monitoring, um, you only have a certain amount of time in order to um, comment on these shows, give it them ratings. And obviously everything is monitored at the end of it as well. Um, how did Reddit infiltrate Cage Match, Scooter? Uh, it's nothing new, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, they, they've always had that system. Um, the funny thing is that Cage Match primarily is a German website. It's not typically an English-speaking website. Um, the idea of customers reviewing the product is nothing new. The idea of customers praising and badmouthing the product is nothing new. When you get a chance, go on Amazon... And look up Haribo sugar-free gummy bears. And read all the reviews. You'll laugh your ass off. But you'll understand my point. Honestly, they're not, they're not going to care. The I mean, cage match. The, the 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 trolls, the co uh, you know, the companies. No, no company pays to be on cage match. You know, it's uh, it's free usage, and it's something like this that. You know, makes stuff end up behind a paywall. You're not wrong about that. I, I, this is why nobody can uh, edit Wikipedia pages just willy nilly. Like one time, I tried to edit uh, Pat Buck's Wikipedia page, uh, and I put in. Uh, and under under personal life, he's also notorious for being very smelly. I hit I hit submit. It was up there for a minute. I hit reload. It was it was gone. It went back to its regular thing. It said, "I'm sorry, we cannot. <laughs> yeah, we need to provide a." Uh, a proof. Uh, and I'm like, mm, my nose doesn't count. Uh, I was I was just making a joke, but um, I mean, all Cage Match has to do is disable that system. And it's not even about Cage Match, so to speak, rather than. Fans just being sucky. You know what I mean? Like, if, okay, we got Twitter, we got Instagram, we got, um, yeah. uh, okay, Cupid, plenty of fish, uh, farmers only, uh, don't eat cheese before noon dot com. Um, I was gonna say Reddit, the squirt circle. Like, there's a lot of toxic places you could. Complain about pro wrestling. 
And now it seems like it's spilling even into the good, um, you know, sites that are honest. You know what I mean? But then again, how many people rely on cage match for reviews of company, of, of, of promotions? Well, two of them are talking right now. I mean, if you think if you think Cage Match is the end all be all source, <laughs> uh, you you must be uh, you know, an Amish kid on Rumspringa uh, discovering the internet for the first time. Hmm. Need to turn bubble after this. Uh... I mean. But, you know, this is why Wrestling With has nothing but five-star reviews on Cage Match. This is correct. Doesn't matter if we wrote them all. Yeah. We're a couple in German. And maybe a few in Hebrew. So long. Tis Dariem Be'aji. Translation, fuck Budgie. One, um, I think it's a podcast. I couldn't tell you one way or the other. Uh, Matt Hardy has one. Um, where he compared Lawrence Cassidy to The Undertaker. Is it time we take Matt Hardy, um, behind the shed and, um, Hold the, the the orange taker. Uh, and funny enough, Matt Hardy is somebody else I follow on Twitch. Uh, most of the time, it's his lovely wife, Rebby Sky. Rebby, I'll never forget when I held you in my arms. You know, it was 105 degree, degrees, and I was sweating so much I looked like a vampire from Twilight. Um. Uh, it's I I can see the comparison. I mean, I don't think he's really thinking like, oh yeah, yeah Cassidy does a mean choke slam. Well, his example was that Orange Cassidy is the guy that. Tony Khan relies on to go out every week and do I don't even want to say a good match, but like compete. Um uh um uh meanwhile John Moxley is kicking the door down. And uh, is he bleeding? Uh I don't know if he has that much left, quite honestly. That's why that, that referee looks anemic. He just has to keep putting his blood into John Moxley to keep giving him blood transfusions. Mo- you, know, you know, AEW has shown so much blood that they have officially cured blood shortages in three countries so far. That's just amazing. I mean, first you have Sami Zayn um, bringing two war-torn countries together uh, in unity, and now you have um, AEW curing blood um, shortages. It's just, it does the hard good to see pro wrestling being great. Um, but no, uh, Orange Cassidy, uh, he compared Orange Cassidy to Undertaker saying that, um, there's a, uh, they have outlandish gimmicks, and Tony Khan relies on on Cassidy like Vince McMahon relies on The Undertaker. Again, right comparison, wrong person to compare. If if 
anything. If I were to compare Orange Cassidy to anybody that the WWE has been uh, has relied upon. Huh? Randy Orton. Wow, you're giving him a lot. Hmm. He feel juice in his head. It makes him want to juice or wait, and understand. Wait, 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 wait. Why does he hear Jews? Huh? Why does he hear Jews? Is he going over uh, Bar Mitzvah? Juice, not juice. Because <laughs> he's orange. Cassidy. Oh, Harvin the Gila. Ha! He, you don't like it, do ya? Is there anything you want to go over? Because I think it's time we uh, end the episode. Uh. Fuck Yoshi Hashi. Oh, Kaliko Chio. Yes, Kaliko has turned into a female AI voice. Uh, yeah, congrats to Yoshihashi on winning New Japan Gold. Uh-huh. Yeah. Alright. The world's ending. That will conclude this episode. Thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, put on YouTube and Castbox. This was sponsored by Red Energy and Fair Enough Coffee. Join us this Tuesday as we interview uh, David Gomez. Join us this Wednesday as we interview Borat Garoni. Um, and follow the show at Wrestling with Ebot on Twitter and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. A lot of those uh, interviews that I mentioned earlier are already um, up on our YouTube. Click, uh, simply subscribe, hit the notifications button. And you will, uh, you can listen to them when they drop at on Tuesday, on Wednesday, four o'clock Pacific, seven o'clock Eastern. Um, you can follow me personally at James C nine nine three. Where can we find Scooter? As always, find me on Twitter at Scooter Dust. Keep an eye out the social medias for any news on the remix. Money in the bank should be. When the remix returns, just keep an eye open. And of course, revel in my Dungeons and Dragons antics, along with me and Rico Constitute Jr. and the rest of the Smoking Dragons clan, twitch.tv backslash Smoking Dragons. And for Coleco Yachts and Screw Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling World Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.